Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Today we're going to talk about getting the version history of a SharePoint list item with Power Automate and then maybe from there having it in a Power App or maybe pushing it to a Power BI dataset. From there on it's up to you what we do with that data. I'm going to help you today to achieve exactly that, to pull the data, so the version history of each SharePoint list item of your choice and um, yeah, from then on you can take over. I hope you like the video. If you do so, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and that you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, have fun. So as you can see here on the screen, I have created, uh, or I've been using this SharePoint list for a while now. It's called addresses, so it, it, I think it, it, we grabbed some data there from uh, forms in one of the previous videos, if you remember. But anyway, that's none of the point. Um, so this SharePoint list has a couple of columns here. So this first name is actually my title column. Then we have last name, street, city, state, and zip code. And I've created three rows with a couple of um, yeah, a couple of entries here. And what I've done also, just to save you the time, is that I've done some changes to this uh, data. So if we see the version history for the first item here, we see that I have done a couple of changes here. I have changed the the city. It's changed from from Cologne to Munich, and I've also changed the street three times. So the first time was called test one, test uh, test street um, one, and then test street twenty two. Crap data, but it doesn't matter. It's the point is how we can grab this data now that we just saw, and uh, the same for the rest of it as well. Okay, so um, today I don't have much time, so I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to walk you through the, the, the finished Power Automate workflow. So stick with me, and if you have any questions, please just let me know in the comments. Okay, so what I've done first is I started with a uh, trigger called when an item is scraped or modified. This will uh, have then to be triggered by a change in that SharePoint list item. If you are going to pull the data in um, in a power app for example you might need to do that base or uh, the trigger based on your power app because then maybe you want the data after pushing a button or so on so, so it will be similar to a scenario where you start the workflow instantly by clicking on that button um, you can do that in a schedule you can do it however you like no? but i went with this solution so as you can see here i pulled uh, the sharepoint site and the addresses so what I'm doing next is I'm initializing, I'm initializing the var item ID because I'm going to send an HTTP request to SharePoint and I need that ID. Um, for some reason, when I use this trigger and then I put the ID directly as a dynamic value from this trigger in my send HTTP request to SharePoint, it creates a loop. And because I don't want that loop, I want it to only trigger for that single item. Um, I created this variable here where I'm initializing the ID so that I can use it in my next step where that, that you'll see in a second. And what I'm doing here in this, um, in this part is let me, uh, you know what, let's switch to new designer, why not? And then we can see it a little bit bigger. So thanks for pilot, go away. So we were here, uh, initialize variable ID. So here you can see a little bit better. What I'm doing is I'm getting from the trigger outputs, which is my item creator modified, and then going into body slash value. The zero is, I've mentioned a lot of times, is for the first item. So we are grabbing the first item out of that array. And then from that item, I want the ID. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. And then this will have my ID that I need. And next one is a bit more important because what I'm doing here, I'm initializing a variable called var first name and also var street. Why? Because just for showing purposes, I'm going to demonstrate how the version history looks like for the first name, which is actually the title, and the street because that's where I did the, the changes. Um, but in your case, you will have, or in your case, if you go with this method, you will have to initialize the variable for all the columns where you need the version history of it. So let's say you have um, a SharePoint list where you are managing some projects or some budget or whatever, and you want to keep track on that budget, on those numbers. So then you will only have to work with, with that column. Right? So you won't, won't have to use all of them. But in this case, I'm just showcasing to you how it can do it with two columns. 
Okay, so um, let's check out this initialize variable by first name. What I'm doing here is just the initialization, initialization, as you can see, English is a very difficult language. Sorry, I'm not native. <laughs> um, and the same thing here as well. Just they are just called differently. They are both strings no, of type string and they are uh, initially empty. So here is where the fun begins, because here we are sending that HTTP request to SharePoint and um, the site address is my project management site address. It's a get method because we are getting something and the URI is this one here. I hope you can read it. Uh, let me make it a bit bigger. So we have here this underscore API web list and then we are getting by title the list that we need, which is the addresses that you can find in your uh, SharePoint list. Keep in mind, uh, let me see here, if I change this, it will not change in the URL. Let me refresh. Yeah, as you can see, it sticks there. So if you are not sure if this name was the initial name of your SharePoint list, always grab it from the URL, do not grab it from here, because this is like the columns, now this is a display name. Now this can change how many times you want after it has been created. But that's over here is the initial name of the SharePoint list, also called the um, the, yeah, the name in the backend, or I call it that way. Okay, so back to Power Automate. And then we have here our items, no? because we want to get the items. And then in parentheses, we need to put that item ID. And as I said, for that reason, I'm using here that variable, no? the var item ID. And what we need from that specific item is the versions. No? So we're grabbing those versions. Okay, so now it becomes a little bit more tricky because since we have more than one version or we might have more than one version we need to create an apply to each loop and to do so you can uh, just say here apply to each and then um, you can pull that uh, loop that is this control no? it's a from type control in your uh, canvas here that's, that's what i did and uh, then you can click into this apply to each loop because you need to grab this um this part here this um yeah, this part of the response of your HTTP request to SharePoint. And I don't know if you can, if you can read it very well, but let me open here note, notepad, and we can see here what we are doing. So we are grabbing, to make it a bit smaller, we are grabbing from this HTTP request to SharePoint the outputs, and this is this part here. And then we are going into the body of that response, and then the D, and then the results. I have no idea what this D means, but we're going to see it in a second in one of the runs when um, it is well, when the JSON is broken down into these segments, no? body, D, results. So that's what we are going through in with this loop. No, we're going on through these results. And that's why it needs to be in this apply to each. I've entered it actually as a, um, oops, not there, as a function. So it should be showing here but somehow it was recognized by SharePoint connector and it's showing like it's a dynamic value. Uh, it works, so I'm happy with that. So what I'm doing next is I'm appending the values that I'm pulling out of this um, function here of the, of the results into um, my variables. So in my scenario, I'm using here the first name and street, but again, keep in mind that you will have to put into this loop all your variables or only that variable that you are wanting to fill with the values. So in this append to string variable, um, where it's, I'm pulling the first name, what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing, I'm, I'm statically writing this string, which is called, which is version, and then this um, hashtag. And in this uh, function here, what I'm doing is I am grabbing from the apply to each, no, from the items that I'm coming in, the apply to each, the version label because when we do a get item from SharePoint list it will also have the version label as um, a key value pair no? so the value is there we know the version and then I want to have that here the version label is a string because it has those quote uh, quotation marks and then it has that number in it so the version number let me check if we can see it here the same way so here it's uh, 3.0, but when you pull it as a, um, from in Power Automate, 
it's a string, it has the quotation marks. And then it says 3.0 or 4.0 and so on and so forth. So for that reason, because we cannot use it later on, um, I want to have it here as an integer. So I'm just converting that version label into an integer. So this will then say version number three, for example, and then it has, I put here a semicolon or a column, sorry. And then I'm grabbing the title. Why? Because the title is my first name here. So this this column. Same thing I'm doing here is just a street instead of the title. So this is going through the loop and it's appending, it's appending. And what I'm doing here next is I'm just composing these two, um, these two uh, appended variables um, so that I can see them better because here I will have to click it through. So this is one of the, the returns here, bar first name, and this is the second one, bar straight. Now it's nothing fancy, it's just putting them in a compose action so that I can see them better. Okay, so let's save this and test it out. So uh, this one here, quick test. And as you can see, it runs successfully. So we have here in our, um, when item scripts are modified, let's see the raw outputs. We have here our body value. And we can see here that the title is the first name. Uh, here it says Enea. It's actually a title. So the backend is still title. And what I want to show you as well is also the version of that. Let me find it real quick. Here, it said version number. And as you can see here, the, the response is a string because it has these quotation marks. So that's something we need to get rid of. And um, well, you don't need to, but it looks better if you get, uh, uh, get them rid of. Okay, so then we have here the initialized variable. This is uh, nothing uh, complicated here. And in our HTTP request, the output, if we see here, we have this segmentation here where we have the body, then we have this D, I don't know what this means, but then we have the results. And then that's the function that I use, body D results. And then we go into this results and here we have, let me find version label 5.0, which is a, let me go here, version E3, which is this one here. And then we have this change. Then if we search for version his version label, we have five, no? because we also have five changes. The next one is 4.0. 3.0, 2.0, 1.0, and so on and so forth. So at, it works. We have our five versions from that field, from that column. And here's nothing else to show. Let's go into the loop and we'll see we are also that we have five different ones. And here is where the version um, changes are being appended uh, with the version history number as well. So you can see here in the value section of my uh, variable that I'm pending, um, it starts from the last one and then it goes to the first one. So that's why it starts from version five and the change is uh, my name Enea. And here you will not see any changes because the name never changed. It was created in the first version and it never changed. So maybe title was also not that good of a um, option to, to pick. But uh, yeah, I mean, you get the point. But see a street, it's a bit more easier to see. The first name of the street was version one. Oh, wait a second, I am yet uh, one. So this is the first run. So street was called uh, on the last version, street, test street 22, you see here. And on version 2.0, it should have been called test street one. So if we go to the version 2.0, it's where it changed. So I hope you understand it. So the number five is the very first version. It says also version one. It was called test one, yeah, this one here. And then on the second version, it was renamed to test street one. And it remained like that for one, two, three versions. So test, so version number two is test street one, three and four are also test street one. So on the fifth version, 
we change it to test street number 22 similar like here so this is how it works i hope it was not too complicated and that you can work with this as well and of course you can see it much better if we go here and you can see it says here version number five is that one or is that one so on and so forth okay so as you saw this is uh working this is how you get the information for your version history for each row and then for each no for, not for each row of course for the specific id but for each um column that you you choose to build into this logic i hope um, this was helpful and if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel it will help the channel grow and for me as well so that i can continue putting content out there for you guys thanks for watching have fun catch you on the next one bye